Hey guys, how are you doing? Today we're gonna solve a pretty cool problem. In this case, we have a uh, two fractions dividing each other, and we need to find A and C. Okay, it's pretty simple. Let me show you what we should do. So first of all, remember that if you have two fractions and you're dividing them uh, by each other, I'm gonna write this over here. If we have, for instance, A over B, and we're dividing by uh, C over D, well, this is the exact same thing as if we did A over B times D over C, okay? You can just simply take the inverse of one of the fractions that you have and multiply it by this one, okay? That's something you can do. Now, we have the same scenario uh, in here. We have two fractions, and if we want to divide them, well, we can just simply multiply by the inverse. So that would look something like this. We can write the entire thing again. So x squared minus 16 over uh, x minus 3 times x plus 6, and then multiply by the inverse of this fraction, which is going to be x squared plus cx minus 18 over x plus a times x, I uh, know, a minus x, I believe, yeah, I believe so, yeah, a minus x, and this is equal to negative 1. Now, there's something pretty cool over here with the negative 1. If you have, if you have a, you know, if you're multiplying two things, and they, and they give you 1, that means that somehow they, these two, they must be equal to 1, okay? And if they are equal to 1, that means that if we have this scenario, the only way we can make this be equal to 1 is if we can cancel out A and C and B and D. And what does that mean? Well, that means that if you can cancel them out, they are the same number, okay? They are the same, frag well, the same, yeah, the same value, okay? So you can cancel them out. And that means that you can also create two equations from this information. From this one equation, you can create two. You can say that A is equal to C and B is equal to D. Okay, and now you probably see what we're gonna do. Well, how this relates to this. If we know that this numerator should be equal to this fraction, this denominator, and this one should be equal to this one, so we get one. Well, we can just create an equation between them, and we can solve for the variable that we need. And you might be wondering, well, what about this negative? Well, you're gonna see where that negative comes from. Okay, but for now, let's try. Let's try to find a. So, let's say that, find A, we're going to do x squared minus 16, since A is equal to C, that means that this is equal to these two factors. So we have x plus A times A minus x, and now we can just simply try to find A. So we know this is a difference of perfect squares, so we can do x plus, uh, x plus 4, times x minus 4, this is equal to x plus a, oh my god, why am I writing the plus, it's so bad, <laughs> uh, a minus x, okay? Now this is partially true, but there's something missing, and that's where this negative 1 comes from. You can see over here that if you have this factor, something you can do with, with it is that you can take out a negative 1 from there, so if you have a minus x and you take a negative 1 from there, well, now what you're going to have is going to be x minus a, okay? And now we have the difference of squares for uh, this x squared minus 16. We have x minus a and x plus a. So we can, you know, instead of saying that this is equal to this, we could also say that, well, this negative 1, we can send it to the top or we can send it anywhere. You know, we can just send it, like, out of these two fractions and say, well, that's just negative 1 multiplying everything, okay? And then we can just simply take, instead of taking a minus x, we can say that this is x minus a, because we took out a negative 1. x minus a, okay? And this is your, well, difference of squares. Now, now you can clearly see that a is equal to 4, okay? a is equal to 4, okay? This is one of the... Not one of the answers that we're looking for, okay? Now, we need to find C. So what can we do with C? Well, we're going to do the same logic that we did before. So C, we can do it last. We know C, oh, well, this numerator must be equal to the denominator so they can cancel out. So we have that, x squared plus 
cx uh, minus 18 must be equal to x minus 3 times x plus c. And now if we FOIL these two factors, let's see how much we get. So we get x squared, now minus 3x plus 6x, minus 3x plus 6x, and then uh, minus 18, minus 3 times 6. And we know this is the same as if we did x squared plus 3x minus 18. And we know, you know, one thing you can say is that, well, this c is the coefficient for the first degree term that we have, okay, for the first degree term relative to x. So that means that this coefficient must be the same as this coefficient in this term. So we know that c is equal to 3, okay? Because c matches this 3x, okay? That's how you know. So c is equal to 3 and a is equal to 4. These are the two answers you are looking for, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. This was pretty cool. I really like these type of problems in which, well, from one equation you can solve for two variables and that's pretty cool because you also need to reason that, well, if I get negative one, that means that this scenario must have happened because I, I should have been able to cancel out everything and get one. And that reasoning, I think it's pretty cool and it just sounds one of the coolest thing, one of the coolest things in math. Yeah, and I really like it, so I hope you like it too, <laughs> and you enjoyed this. So, well, uh, don't forget to smash the like button, and see you in the following video.